JND Wildfire has been 100% contained. There is still rehabilitation work to be done and still precautions residents need to take as cleanup begins. Right now it's uh, rehabilitation. The 16-mile fire that had been burning for nearly two weeks along the Pike Monroe County border is now 100% contained. Over 8,000 acres have been burned, 11 structures were lost or damaged. Although the fire is out, the long recovery process is just beginning, a process that will start with work to get the area looking back to normal. A lot of the vegetation that was off on the side is brought back in, and then if the areas are seeded down to help uh, them revegetate and reduce erosion and bring a more natural look. With standing dead trees, erodible soils, and other hazards present throughout the burn area, Officials are asking visitors to avoid fire areas for all spring recreational activities. They're also asking visitors to other areas of the Delaware State Forest to use caution, with fire vehicles and heavy equipment still in the area. Officials say while the cause of the 16-mile fire was determined arson, almost half of the forest fires in Pennsylvania are caused accidentally by burning debris. In spring, it can rain one day and easily be ready to burn the next day in Pennsylvania. Officials are offering a $10,000 reward for information on those responsible for the arson. For more information, including fire safety tips, head to our website at WFMZ.com. Reporting live in the newsroom, Will Edwards, 69 News. Now we tried to talk to the bar's owner. He claimed he knows nothing about the incident. So far, no arrests have been made, and Allentown police are still investigating the case. Reporting in Allentown, William Edwards, 69 News. We're here at Penn State Lehigh Valley for Walk a Mile in her shoes. People are excited. They're decked out in red, and some are walking a little more carefully than normal. Voters took to the polls for the primaries in New Hampshire today, a state that, on the Democratic side, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is favored to win over rival Hillary Clinton. Sanders brands himself as a Democratic Socialist, but for many people, that begs the question, what exactly is a Democratic Socialist? We talked to Dr. Andrew Essig, a political science professor at DeSales University, for some clarification. Democratic Socialism is an ideology. And it's a mix between having a democratic political system and a socialist economic system, which is basically the government is running the economy, making important decisions, uh, who's going to produce what, how much, for whom, by whom, price controls, and things like that, as compared to a capitalist system where the individual consumer makes that decision based on supply and demand. And it's in the, in the ownership of private industry and private individuals. Often Sanders will earnestly point out that democratic socialism is different than just plain socialism like he did on Saturday Night Live last week. We need to unite and work together if we're all going to get through this. Sounds like socialism to me. <laughs> democratic socialism. Now, uh, what's the difference? Huge difference. But what exactly is that difference? Essig talked to us about the distinction between the two and what that distinction means in terms of the policies being proposed by Sanders. Even when he talks about Wall Street, he isn't coming in and saying, hey, we're going to buy you out and turn you into a state-run a state -run business. But there's obviously going to be a higher degree of regulation. Another policy that Bernie Sanders does promote is he's talking about free education, free college education, he's saying everybody should at least have the opportunity to go to college for free. And you can obviously see the benefits to that, that you have an educated citizenry going out being more productive in the economy. And Essex says that's one of the reasons he's done so well among young voters. Some voters, though, object to free college education because the bill will fall to taxpayers. It's interesting to see how the millennials are supporting Bernie and simply, oh, the millennials are all a bunch of little socialists running around. That's not true. They're simply reacting to the environment in which they find themselves whether it's their parents having their house foreclosed in 2008 as a result of the house market bubble bursting, or the fact that they are leaving college with over $100,000 of debt and knowing for the next 10, 15 years, they're gonna have to pay that off if they do pay it off. It's uncertain how Sanders will fare against Hillary Clinton after New Hampshire when the primaries head to South Carolina and Nevada. So for now, those young voters supporting Sanders will have to wait and see. Reporting from New Hampshire, William Edwards, 69 News. No, I didn't get to ask you guys anything. Could I ask you guys something? <clears throat> Could you, would you give me a hair transplant? <laughs> he might have some to spare. <laughs>